On June 24th of 2019, SpaceX is scheduled to launch their next Falcon Heavy rocket for the Department of Defense's STP-2 mission. In fact, this mission doesn't entail a single spacecraft, but rather 24 different satellites. So what is STP-2? Why does this mission entail so many different satellites? And what challenges is SpaceX going to run into during this mission? Let's talk about that. The first question we should probably answer is, what does STP-2 even stand for? And it's actually an acronym for Space Test Program 2, where the Space Test Program is a program that is in charge of space science and technology for the Department of Defense. In fact, the Space Test Program is actually ran by a part of the Air Force Space Command. Although the acronym is STP-2, which might make it sound like this is only the second ever mission for the space test program, in fact, it's not. Some of the missions have gone all the way back to 1967, and throughout the years they've been on different launches or subset of missions for other spacecraft. However, the overall goal for these missions is to test new technology and new techniques in orbit. And the main reason for this is if you have a new idea or approach to solving a problem in space, you might not want to implement that brand new idea into a multi-billion dollar spacecraft. Because if that one idea breaks, that could potentially mean the entire spacecraft goes down. So instead, the space test program and a lot of these smaller satellites come into play and can test these new ideas or technologies that if they're successful can be used in future missions. And included in this test is also the Falcon Heavy rocket itself. But why? Why would this mission be more complicated than the average one? And if you were to look at the basic specifications of the mission, you wouldn't really notice anything out of the ordinary. In fact, the payload mass of all 24 satellites combined is 3,700 kilograms. And if you're familiar with the Falcon 9 or the Falcon Heavy, that value probably sounds very small. In fact, the Falcon 9 by itself could take 3,700 kilograms all the way to Mars. So why are they using a larger vehicle just to get into Earth orbit? And the answer to this is because of the space test program. Again, they're testing the reliability of the Falcon Heavy, but when the Falcon Heavy upper stage gets into space, it has to do a lot of different things. It has to do multiple maneuvers, basically turning their engines on and off, getting to different orbits, deploying the different satellites into these different orbits, and then the longevity of the spacecraft or upper stage overall has to be tested because the mission itself is going to be lasting six hours. Now when I say six hours, I don't mean the satellites themselves and they're only going to last six hours, but rather in a typical SpaceX launch, SpaceX is only responsible for launching the satellite and getting it into its intended orbit. Whereas in this case, it has to make sure that it gets multiple satellites into their different intended orbits. Therefore, they have to be in charge for six hours rather than the typical mission that may just be around an hour or so long. The STP-2 mission is going to be a night launch, which will be the first night launch for a Falcon Heavy. Therefore, there should be a lot of very pretty pictures coming from this event. In addition, the two side boosters of the Falcon Heavy were actually previously flown on the last Falcon Heavy launch back in April, and they're going to try and recover all three boosters. So it should be interesting to see how well they're able to do this. Now that I've covered the basic overview of the STP-2 mission in terms of what SpaceX is doing, now I'm going to cover some of the payloads on board and what their different purposes are. The first and largest satellite on board this mission is DSX, which stands for Demonstration and Science Experiments. Now DSX is 600 kilograms and is part of the Air Force Research Lab. The primary mission for this is to test radiation and degradation of large structures in medium Earth orbits. 
Now, a medium Earth orbit is anywhere between a low Earth orbit and a geostationary orbit. And a more technical term would be anything between 2,000 kilometers and around 35,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Once DSX is in this medium Earth orbit, it will be deploying a 25 meter long boom and a 25 meter long truss to try and see how the radiation and degradation affects these two objects. The next largest satellite on board this mission is Cosmic 2, which is actually a constellation of six identical satellites, each weighing 278 kilograms. Now, Cosmic 2 is ran by NOAA, or the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as well as the Air Force, NASA JPL, and Taiwan's National Space Organization. The overall goal for COSMIC-2 is to assess weather prediction and be able to measure different changes in the ionosphere around Earth. The next largest mission is NASA's GPIM, which weighs 180 kilograms. GPIM stands for the Green Propellant Infusion Mission, and ultimately what they're going to try and do is introduce a new propellant that was developed by the Air Force and see how well it functions in orbit or in space. This new propellant will replace hydrazine, or hopefully will replace hydrazine, which is very toxic and hard to work with here on Earth. So if this new propellant ends up working, then it would make it much safer for engineers here on the surface to develop these propulsion modules. The next largest satellite is OTB-1, which stands for Orbital Testbed-1. An orbital testbed holds various instruments, but one of the main and probably more popular ones that's on board is NASA JPL's Deep Space Atomic Clock. Now this atomic clock can theoretically hold the time within one second for the next million years. So hopefully it ends up working in space because if it does, they'll be able to introduce this to more deep space missions that will help them not only in timekeeping, but make sure all their maneuvers and all their instruments are working according to the right time. The next largest satellite is NPSAT-1, which is being produced by the Naval Postgraduate School. Now, NPSAT-1 has a mass of around 86 kilograms, and its main purpose is to test new techniques in space situational awareness. The next largest satellite is PROX-1, which is being maintained by Georgia Tech. PROX-1 has a mass of 71 kilograms, and essentially it's going to be doing a very similar thing to NPSAT-1. It is going to be testing new techniques in space situational awareness. PROX-1 is essentially going to be trying to maneuver in space, rendezvous, and see how well they can perform with their low thrust engines. However, PROX-1 is also holding a CubeSat called LightSail-2. LightSail-2 was fully funded through crowdsourcing and is being operated by the Planetary Society. The main goal for LightSail-2 is to test how well solar sails work. Now, essentially, if this ends up working, it will be the very first spacecraft orbiting the Earth to be solely propelled by the sunlight. The next largest satellite is Oculus ASR, which stands for Oculus Attitude and Shape Recognition. Now, Oculus ASR has a mass of around 70 kilograms and was built by undergraduate students at Michigan Technological University. It's also a joint mission with the Air Force because the ultimate goal is to send this spacecraft into orbit and the Air Force is going to try and use a various ground-based telescopes or optical telescopes to determine what the attitude of the spacecraft is or the orientation. So the attitude tells us which way the spacecraft is facing in space, whereas the orbit itself tells us where the spacecraft is going. Now, some of them can influence one or the other, but essentially Oculus ASR is going to test the Air Force's capability in determining which way a spacecraft is facing just by using their optical telescopes. The last 10 satellites are all CubeSats from various schools, including the US Naval Academy, the US Air Force Academy, the University of Texas, Cal Poly, and a high school in Florida. Now, some of these CubeSats range from different things like detecting when dust hits the spacecraft, all the way to testing a kilometer long tether between two of these CubeSats to see how they might be able to use this for propulsion techniques. But if you would like to learn more about any of these spacecraft that I mentioned or the mission overall, there are gonna be a lot of links in the description down below, so be sure to check that out. But what do you find most interesting about the STP-2 mission? 
Is it one of the spacecraft that are on board, or is it the fact that they're testing the Falcon Heavy's capabilities? Let me know in the comments below. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.